And good evening, everyone, from the SIU Arena. Exciting Saluki basketball coming your way in just a few minutes. I'm Mike Trude. Rick Gregg is alongside. Donnie Tillman will join us in a few moments from the sidelines. But we've got a great game for you tonight as the Salukis hope for a little home cooking tonight as they take on the Indiana State Sycamores. Southern has won 20 home games in a row, and they hold a huge advantage at the arena over Indiana State, winning 21 games in a row, Donnie. You're, you're exactly right. 20 home games in a row, third longest streak in SIU history, eighth longest active streak in the nation. And SIU on that road trip, of course, four games, one of those against against these Indiana State Sycamores, along with two big games, Creighton, the big game lost there, and then the game against Northern Iowa, which was a lot closer than Coach Weber and the Salukis wanted it to be. They can't afford to overlook the Sycamores tonight. No question, but Creighton did everyone a favor by losing at Evansville the other night, so first place is again up for grabs. Southern just a half game out, trailing Creighton. Creighton is 7-1, the dogs are 6-1, so Southern cannot afford to slip up at home. No, they can. You can never afford to lose at home, of course, but certainly not tonight. Indiana State, one of the worst teams in the Valley, but some of their players have had some real good games against SIU, including freshman Jared Adler had a stellar game against the Salukis at Indiana State. We'll see it, what he does down low against the Salukis tonight. All right, we look for a great one tonight. It's 6-1 SIU against 1-5 Indiana State. We'll be back with the starting lineups and more when we come back to the ball game after this. Equipment, Biasi, keyboard and sound. Venegoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and BNG Venegoni Distributing, 710 Bookstore, and Ike Auto Park. We are in front of a near capacity crowd here at the SIU Arena tonight. We're ready for the starting lineups. First for the visitors from Indiana State, the Sycamores come in with a record of five and 12, and one and five in the conference. They will go with Marcus Howard and Lamar Grimes at the guard positions. Cottrell Green will be a forward. David Moss will also be a guard. They throw as a three-guard lineup. And then Brian Geese will be the center. David Moss is their scorer. Marcus Howard is their defensive guy. They're their two best players. All right, and now for the homestanding Salukis of Southern Illinois, they will go with the lineup that they've gone with all season long. It'll be a three-guard lineup as well with Darren Brooks, Stetson Hairston, and Kent William at the guards. The forward will be Jermaine Dearman, and Sylvester Willis will be the center. Jermaine Dearman coming off a very poor performance at Northern Iowa. Southern had to go into overtime to beat the Panthers, did so by Kent Williams hitting a three-point conventional bucket at the end of the game to send it to OT, and then Southern doing a great job in overtime, outscoring Northern Iowa 17-7. So Jermaine's got to get his act together back at home. Yeah, we're having some problem with Rick's mic, so we'll get Rick's uh, sound taken care of. That was a photo of Royce Waltman, their head coach. He's in his sixth year. He's got a record of 86 and 79 overall, 275 and 165 overall in 16 seasons. He's assisted by Dick Bender, Rick Ray, and Michael Menser. Menser was a thorn in the Saluki side for many years as the point guard and three-point extraordinaire shooter for the Sycamores. And of course, the Salukis coached by Bruce Weber in his fifth year at the helm, 90 and 51 overall, 52 and 27 here at the SIU Arena. The Salukis lead the all-time series 65 to 34. And as we mentioned in our pregame show, Southern has won 21 in a row against these Sycamores of Indiana State. So the last time Indiana State won here was before Ronald Reagan was president of the United States. That goes back a few terms, and a lot of the students here at Southern weren't even born yet. It'll be Sylvester Willis jumping center for the Salukis. Sylvester doesn't lose many of these, and he's got it. Indiana State in the man-to-man -man defense. German out front. Williams looking down at Jermaine. Nobody near him. Can't get it to fall. And the rebound controlled by Giesen. It's Wilford Antoine, number 13 in the starting lineup. Control Green up top. That's Moss with it to the corner. Shot is up and long. Air ball. Air ball. 
Williams. Sylvester wanted to spin, couldn't. And the Salukis reset it with 20 on the shot clock. Darren Brooks, who had 21 points and nine boards against Northern Iowa the other night. Nice dish inside, but a miss by Willis. And Sylvester Willis has struggled to complete plays for about 10 games now. He really has, and we'll see if, if, if he can come into this game. That's not a good way for him to start. You mentioned so, uh, Darren as well, trying to push the offense. SIU needs to stay in control. It's a problem that plagued him at Northern Iowa. Hairston on Antoine. Another miss by David Moss. Just underway. I'm Mike Trude. Rick Gregg is alongside. We've got his microphone straightened out. We'll check in with Donnie Tillman throughout the ball game. Good to be back. Kent wide open for three. Book it. Kent Williams, SIU's top plus shooter, and he hits the ones that you don't think he will, especially if maybe 25 feet away instead of 22. Indiana State suffered a humiliating loss at home just a few days ago to Bradley, only scoring 15 points at the half. Really struggling offensively. Cottrell Green, a 6'5 junior out of Aurora, Illinois, knocks that down and gets them back to within a point. Indiana State's had two of those performances where they haven't been able to score. They had one much earlier in the season, uh, I believe against Murray State, that just absolutely, or against Illinois Chicago, excuse me, that really looked bad in the beginning. Brooks on the wing, draws the foul from Wilfred Antoine. First foul of the ball game, 17.42 left to go. The clock is in your upper right-hand corner. And Josh Warren will check into the ball game for Sylvester Willis. And Josh is getting more and more playing time as Sylvester struggles and struggles and struggles. You know, Coach Weber said at the beginning of the year he expected Warren to start growing and maturing and really by Christmas time be a really solid player. Williams from the corner, no. That's Moss with it. Hairston gets the job of guarding David Moss. The guy who killed Southern at Indiana State was a guy off the bench, Jared Adler. Shot is no good. Rebound by Brian Geeson. And no good. Oh, how about that <laughs> flip by Stitson Hairston? That's court presence for you, knowing you're going to step out of bounds. DB, no. Not a good shot. It was a bad shot. Darren knew it was a bad shot as soon as it left his hands. He hit run off right off the rim. We're going to see it right here again. He's going to go up there and watch him run right after the ball because he knew it was bad and he was trying to get the rebound. Brian Turner checks in for DB. Brooks on the, to the bench. Dearman also to the bench as Brad Korn is in the lineup. Brad's on a hot streak of late. He's been shooting very well in the Missouri Valley Conference season, especially the last few games. Ryan Turner, number 14, has really picked it up defensively, has hit some key shots, and has, has come around, I think, quicker than Coach Weber thought he might. Antoine. I mentioned that he was a point guard, a guy who could pass the ball around, but that time he, uh, he certainly did all right uh, just shooting the ball himself. Kent. Goes to the wing and corn. Cross to Turner. Brian up. No good. Tip by Brad Korn. Way to work for Brad Korn to use his body. One of the knocks on Brad Korn for a long while has been that he doesn't do that enough. Doesn't play tough enough down low, but he certainly did there. The arena may not be sold out, but it's close. Moss with a nice move. Couldn't get it to fall, but Geeson. Good hustle by Brian Geeson, kept it alive. And Geeson gets rewarded for his efforts, knocking it down, and the Sycamores lead at 6 5. Just ahead of a media timeout. Mention the pack crowd, a lot of students in the ends of the court. We'll see if that affects Indiana State shooting at the other basket. Josh Warren, no, but draws the foul on Geeson. That'll be the first team, first foul on Brian, and the second team foul overall. And Warren will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. He shoots them pretty well. 66% on the season. Shot is up and down. 
Darren Brooks back in for Stetson Hairston. SIU's had its ups and downs from the free throw line this season. More ups than last year, that's for certain. We'll see if it looks like, well, spoke too soon. It looked like it was going to be a good one. One out of two ties the game at six. Royce Waltman's got to be pleased as punch with the start by his ball club. The Salukis just haven't hit any shots. Rebound to Korn. Kent from three. Good look. Short. Foul's going to be called on Kent Williams for the block. Well, you mentioned SIU shooting uh, what was early on in this game against Indiana, uh, Northern Iowa. They hit four, 15 three-pointers, so you'd think they'd be able to make some uh, make some shots even if they're closer in, but so far it hasn't been the case. All right, we are tied at 6. 14.53 left to go in the first half. We'll be back with more basketball from the arena after this. And welcome back. We are tied at 6 here, just underway. You know, here's a great way to support WSIU. See all the NBC tournament games and enjoy VIP treatment. Become a member of WSIU at the $250 level and receive a pair of all-session tickets to the NBC tournament. Support the Salukis, bring a friend to this year's NBC games, and enjoy the Arch Madness. Donnie Tillman is somewhere around the arena. Donnie, what do you got for us? If you're a fan of SIU football, then you have to recognize this face right here. This is Bart Scott, former Saluki defensive back, now playing with the Ravens. How's it been back in Carbondale, Scott? Well, it's great to come back and you know just feel the enthusiasm of the fans that cheer for you for so long. It's great to see the guys doing a great job and come back for an annual banquet, just having a ball right now. Now here you have a new addition with the Ravens. You've got Mike Singletary as your new linebackers coach. How's that going to affect you? Well, I mean, it's going to affect me positively. Uh, anytime you can have a legend as a coach and you can extract that knowledge from it, it's a, it's a very positive um, situation to be in. All right, thanks a lot, Bart. Right, thank you. That's Bart Scott, everyone. Back to you, Rick and Mike. Thank you, Donnie. It's great to see Bart Scott back on campus. And it's good to see him succeeding in the NFL, too. Uh, a couple of times you see him on the highlights as well, Sports Center and such. So good, good, good pub for SIU. Number 10 is Lamar Grimes in the game. That's Marcus Howard. Jake Sams, number 34. And a foul on Brian Turner. Just reached in a little too hard on that foul. Either way, it would have been Indiana State ball because he kicked it out of bounds. Brian's a 6'1 junior out of St. Louis. Came from Merrimack Junior College. Geeson on the right baseline. Throws it away. Trying to get Grimes cutting down. Grimes is their quickest player. They've got a quick lineup in there right now with Howard and Grimes. And also number two, Darren Evans, a 6'7 freshman out of Chicago. But SIU was doing a good job of blocking up the middle, and so Grimes, no matter how fast, couldn't quite get to that basketball. It's Korn and Willis, Brooks, Williams, and Turner right now for Southern. Down on the block to Sylvester. Horn, wide open, decides not to shoot it, kicks it to Darren, no good. Good hustle we by Sylvester Willis. Ties it up and will go the other way, and Southern is settling for three-point shots, and they need to get it inside. They need to be forcing it inside. Jermaine was out of the ball game. That probably had something to do with the decision, too. But uh, it was good hustle by Sylvester Willis that play. One thing he hasn't been doing lately is good diving after basketballs. And he looks to be out to make a statement tonight. That was at least one signal. Jermaine is back in along with Blake Schoen, and Hairston are all back in the lineup for Southern. Schoen's first appearance tonight. Hairston now will guard Grimes. That's Jake Sams. He's a sophomore out of Mount Zion, Illinois. Nice cut, Grimes scores. Was a good cut by Grimes, and it was good defense on Jermaine before, by Jermaine beforehand. Uh, playing out of position, though, led uh, Grimes to have that open lane. Hairston with it on the wing to Jermaine.
Three second call. Southern turns it over back to the Sycamores. Try to keep possession of the basketball. Turnovers have plagued SIU at various times this season. Jared Adler in now. 6'9 junior out of Moreau, Indiana. Had a great game against Southern at Indiana State. Set career highs just about every uh, every category if you can that you can name for him, including minutes and points and blocks. So we'll see if Jermaine does and Celeste do a better job on Adler this time than they did at Indiana State. Saluki's looking for a spark. It's been a rather slow start. They trail it 8-6. That's Moss. Hook call on Grimes. It'll go the other way. A turnover now on the Sycamores as Grimes commits his first foul. Grimes didn't think he did, though. He, was, he thought maybe Stetson had held him, but his hands were behind Stetson, and Stetson wasn't moving anywhere. 12.53 to go. It's still just 8-6. to six. Southern has a three-pointer from Williams, a free throw from Warren, and a tip-in by Brad Korn, and that's it. You said that I had to look at the clock. We've already gone through seven minutes, and there's only 14 points scored. Dearman up high. Southern tried to get the high-low going that time. Stetson. Nice pass to Darren Brooks, but he can't finish it. Would have been pretty if he could, but he was too far underneath the basket to get that shot back up and in. Nice steal by Stetson Hairston. Quick jump shot, good. Nice trigger and release by Hairston. That's what you need. Defense leads to offense for the dogs on this one. We're tied at eight. That's Darrell Evans with it. Tomas on the right wing. Grimes for three. Yes. He likes playing against Southern, that's for sure. That's his ninth three of the year. He's nine for 23. Grimes averages 16 against the Salukis in his games against them. Sylvester with it. Nine on the shot clock. A three from Stetson. Good. Had just enough room to get that shot off at the top of the key. And why not? Stetson's got a nice touch on the outside. We are tied again. Just ahead of our second time out of the game. He walked with a ball and no call. Jermaine was, was How about begging that? the official. Geeson. Nice. Nice by Brian Geeson. Just dribbled right behind and around St uh, Sylvester Willis, who couldn't really do much because if he moved, it was a foul. Hairston again. Jermaine has not even had an open look yet. Sylvester, no good. Indiana State is doing a fine job down low, keeping Jermaine and Sylvester and the rest of the big Salukis in check. Mismatch here, Grimes on Blake Schoen. Speed against uh, strength. They switch back. Nice hustle by Schoen. Didn't pay off, but it was a nice play diving, and now a good one by Stetson. Jermaine! That's the way to finish that play. Jermaine Dearman had two guys on him. He just dribbled right around him and put it in. Nice play. Jermaine likes the open floor, and he took advantage of it on that occasion. Moss with it. Southern clamping down on the defense now. Evans way out high. They've got their defensive guards in except for Kent, and he's ready to come back in. Seven on the shot clock. Four. Oh, Blake Schoen. He got him. No question about that. Pushed him a little bit, and it was enough. Couldn't move his feet quick enough to stop Evans from driving the baseline. Now, Schoen is not known as the quickest in Luke. He's just a solid defender. And we've come to our second time out of the game. 9.38 left. We are again knotted at Southern 13, Indiana State 13. Back with more at the arena following these announcements. Three minutes on defense and, and fed off of that and gotten some pretty easy buckets. They have, and what's impressed me is that is the diving, the intensity that SIU is playing with right now. That play hard, their, the play hard chart, I was going to say, but they're playing hard, diving after loose balls. We saw, saw Blake do it. We saw Sylvester do it. We saw Stetson Hairston go into the uh, SIU bench. They're not going to give up on anything yet, and that will pay off. And there's a shot of the SIU arena. Look, there aren't many empty seats at all. 
in the SIU arena this evening. It's phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal. Students here by the thousands, maybe a couple thousand students here as well. And they're sitting in their correct seats, so the uh, police won't have too much of a problem as they had <laughs> earlier this Shot year. Shot no good. Back come the dogs. There's the shooting percentage. We said it was a little bit sluggish for Southern. It is just 35%. Indiana State, 6 for 12 at 50%. So Southern's gotten more shots, and we're tied, though, 13 all. Southern inbounding it. That's Darren Brooks right there, number one. And he's been one heck of a scorer for Southern this year, especially in conference play. As he and Kent Williams are the only Salukis whose numbers have gone up in the conference as opposed to out of conference. He's averaging about 15 points a game. Marcus Howard, score. their best defender, guarding. Oh, Geeson all over Kent. There's the call. That's two on Brian Geeson. How long will Royce Waltman let Geeson play? Not very long at all. Geeson's been a factor though so far, really been uh, able to control Jermaine Dearman. We, you, you mentioned it earlier, he hasn't had a good look all game. Into the game for Indiana State is Torrance, number 32. Jermaine, top of the key, no, he doesn't shoot threes. <laughs> He'd like to. Back door to nobody. Jermaine just didn't have anywhere to put the ball that time. He picked up his dribble too soon and was, was kind of forced to pick up his dribble too soon. Couldn't do anything with it and was trying to get it to, I believe, a cutting uh, uh, Brian Turner there, but had no luck. Nice deal. Here's a slam. Jermaine. High percentage shot that time off the steal. Getting this, not this almost capacity crowd on its feet. Moss with it. Marcus Howard not really an offensive threat. He's their defensive stopper. Jermaine Lucky there could have been called for a block on that jump. Darren Brooks with the rebound. He had nine boards at Northern Iowa. Here's where Jermaine can go to work. And he's fouled from behind when he's got the ball alone on the block. That's when he's at his best, and he's fouled by Cottrell Green. Fifth foul already on Indiana State. We only have just over eight minutes left to go, so foul shots, foul trouble could play a part. Green's only 6'5". Of course, Jermaine 6'8". He's got a decided advantage if they can keep it down low. And that's why it's tough with Geeson out of this game, because he's their big man for Indiana State, 6'9". Brooks. Southern had a brand-new shot clock because of the foul. Williams trying to get open. Kent, top of the key. Got Moss in the air, misses the shot badly. Kent forced that one, didn't need to. No, he didn't. A lot of time left on that shot clock, as you mentioned. Charge. But he made up for it on the other end by getting those feet set. And how many times have we seen Kent Williams take a charge like that? Here we're going to see him do it one more time. Stop, plant, and get run over. Take the pain, but get the ball back. 7.50 left to go in the half. We've come to our another media timeout. It's the Salukis 15, Indiana State 13. We'll be back after this. And welcome back to the SIU Arena. The Dogs now lead it 15 to 13. When we last left you, it was 13 all. Jermaine Dearman with a slam gives the Dogs their two-point edge. Donnie Tillman has something about number one for Indiana State. Donnie. Yes, thanks. Marcus Howard, number one on Indiana State, if you can see him on the court. His assignment today is to cover Kent Williams. Now, Marcus Howard was an all-defensive member of the Missouri Valley Conference team last year, but so far he seems to have struggled a little bit. He's been a step behind Kent Williams as Kent has been running around screens, getting open for shots. We'll see how that prevails later on in this game. But so far, it seems like Kent has the early edge. Back to you guys. Thank you, Donnie. Kent thus far has just the three-pointer that he hit. But he's had some pretty good looks, although he did force the last shot that he took. Korn inbounds the ball to Hairston. The Salukis have Hairston and Korn, Warren, Williams, and Brian Turner on the floor. Kent will get his points. It's a matter of how the rest of the Salukis do. Warren out at three-point range to Korn. Brad up. No. Tip. No. That was another fourth shot by Brad. There were easily 10, 15 seconds left on the shot clock. He didn't need to force that one either. Wilfred Antoine. Cottrell Green, he has two fouls. Howard 
Free throw line jumper short rebound Josh Warren tipped. Again no tip Hairston finally controls. SIU good job on the rebounding side there had three guys in position. Nice pass to Josh Warren but he can't finish and the dogs have missed I don't know how many inside shots tonight. You know we talked about it during the women's game you got to hit the bunnies and unfortunately SIU isn't doing that so far. Nice pass. Foul on Josh Warren as they got it into Ted Morris. Warren's outsized there, and so he had to. We'll see him down here again. If you watch this pass, he's outsized by an easily easy three inches or so. So trying to get up and block that shot, there wasn't much he could do. Morris is 6'10. Warren is uh, at a paltry, if you will, 6'8. Morris hits the free throw. Tie it with this one. He's four for nine on the season. If he hits this one, it'll be 50%, and he is. It's five out of 10. And we're tied again, 15 all. Again, a sluggish start by the Salukis. Morris doesn't see all that much playing time, but I think Royce Waltman thinks that keeping his big man in the game to pound away at SIU's big man might be the way to get a win here. Stetson. Kent, nice pass to Josh, and he can't can't corral it. Josh couldn't find the handle. Southern will keep the ball on the alternate possession. Great feed. It was by an Kent excellent Williams. feed by Kent. It almost looked as though he didn't ever have possession, just kind of deflected the ball right at Josh. But I don't think Josh expected it. Kent saw the double team coming quicker and got rid of it. And Jermaine coming back in for Josh. All knotted up at 15. Salukis play home again Wednesday night against the Bradley Braves here at the arena 705 tip off nice play by Kent left hand no would have been better with the finish I tell you what there's a lid on that basket down at the south end and Royce Weltman wants to call timeout and Royce is either talking to his point guard or the official one of the two he's doing a little bit of both but we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it here as Royce Waltman calls the timeout I think it's a 30 second timeout and it should be Saluki struggling 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 they're getting it down low and they're getting the shots you think they want they're just not finishing them. So, I mean, that bodes well because there's not going to be a lid on the basket forever. No, there isn't. And it doesn't make much sense, though, because you've got that little five foot ring where you can't make shots. And of course, the farther away you get, it should be an easier the shot should be easier to make there. You saw Royce Waltman for a brief second. Uh, I think for media day, he, he he's uh, he's been around this league for a long while. That's for certain. And he learned from Bob Knight at Indiana. So Royce, if necessary, will get on his players. We know that. Salukis beat this team in Terre Haute 69 to 61 a couple of weeks ago and again it was a, a game that Southern had eight point leads nine point leads ten point leads but could never ever ever finish it and ended up winning by the 69 61 score there's the turnover margin four for Indiana State it says just one for the Salukis but I know that's I Certainly don't think feels that's correct. Like Certainly feels like more. Left side and control green down to the corner. Somebody's traveling. Woo. Green with a flush. He was just open because the double team pulled his man off there. You mentioned it feels like there are more turnovers. Two uh, missed two foot shots should, should count as turnovers if you ask me. Kent inside. Can't score but draws the foul and Kent will go to the free throw line and Southern's getting it inside. They sure Nothing are. Nothing wrong with the execution of the offense. It's the finishing and here's Kent's on the drive there. You'll watch him go up and this kid Kent Williams hits the floor more than any player I've ever seen. He just goes up. He's not afraid to challenge anyone and you're right. SIU is getting the ball inside whether it's Kent whether it's Jermaine whether it's uh, Brad w corner Josh Warren as he was getting the ball down low. 71 percent free throw shooter. Oh that was miserable. 70% free throw shooter after that one. Willis and Brooks back in for Corn and Schoen. 526 remaining here in the half. What a low scoring first half. Kent missed them both. Kent seems to be out of rhythm ever since he hit that first shot of the game. The three point to, three pointer to started. He hasn't been in rhythm the rest of the way. There's a charge. And it's on Wilford Antoine. He's got two. So they're getting in a little bit of foul trouble. 
Watch the replay again. He just goes right into Sylvester Willis. And Willis does a nice job of setting his feet, or at least what he did what he could before his legs were taken out from under him by Antoine. Sycamores lead it by two, 17-15, and the team has done nothing to get this capacity crowd involved in the game. It's very quiet, and it's a very fast first half. All the time it's taken, I think we're only about 30 minutes to play this time, and normally it would take about 45, 50. Crowd trying to get the team going with some clapping and some moving and a foul inside on number 34. Jake Sams and Southern will be at the free throw line. Nine fouls already on Indiana State. It'll be Jermaine shooting the one of the bonus. SIU was only uh, hacked away five times. Jermaine a 62 percenter. He's made 48 out of 77. Well, that's important because after Kent missed those other two, it's easily easy for uh, bad free throw shooting to become contagious across your team. So it's important for Jermaine, not one of the best shooters on the team, to hit his. He's got five points going for the team lead with six. Got it. And we're knotted again at 17. And that's Antoine spinning Hairston around to Moss. Around the horn it goes, Marcus Howard. Adler hasn't even gotten a shot off in this one. Antoine again to Sam's right wing. Howard, good. Marcus Howard drains the three. He was open with a good shot. He's not much of a scoring threat, as we've said, but you can't leave anyone open at the college level. Double team. Somebody's open. <laughs> Jermaine didn't care, and he it's a good care. thing that shot went down because it wasn't a, a very smart one, that's for certain. But it looked good. 20 to 19, just ahead of the media timeout again. Nice Steel. steal by Kent. Couldn't quite come up with it, though. Marcus Howard. Five on four. He traveled. No call. Everybody knew it. Rebound to Willis, one-handed rebound. SIU's making some stellar plays to keep them in the game, but the fundamental shots aren't going down. Nice pass. Oh, and Sly is hammered down. And Sylvester will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Normally, Sylvester will finish that with a flush, and here it is. But watch, uh, I'm sorry, Adler for Indiana State still moving his feet, and there's nothing much that uh, Sylvester could do because he couldn't get to the basket with that guy in the way. Sylvester can give the Salukis a lead if he hits a free throw here. He's got to hit them both, though. It's 20 to 19 right now, Indiana State. And they're going to clean up the floor where Sylvester went. Sylvester Willis at the line for the Salukis, shooting two. In and out for Sylvester. And so it goes. He's shooting just 62% from the line. A couple other Missouri Valley games in progress. Early score out of Evansville. The uh, Purple Laces, who beat Creighton earlier, just have a one point lead on Illinois State. I tell you, that team has had some trouble, but it's tough, but they're playing tough. He missed them both. And Sylvester's offensive woes just continue. It's not just Sylvester tonight, though. SIU's now missed five free throws, I believe. Adler. Jermaine all over him, too much all over him. Stay quiet, Jermaine. You, were, you pushed him. Questionable or not, don't get in trouble. So they're not in the bonus yet. And as we go to break, the Saluki is still trailing. It's Indiana State 20, Southern Illinois 19. We'll be back. Welcome back to the arena. Indiana State leads at 20 to 19. Remember, WSIU is very proud to bring you these Saluki basketball games, courtesy of business, alumni, and member support. Thanks for helping us make WSIU your home for great Saluki basketball. Pledging right now tells us just how much you want to keep the dogs on the air. Call 1-800-745-9748. That's 1-800-745-9748. And we truly appreciate your support for Saluki basketball on WSIU-TV. Southern's missed a few free throws. 
Here's a nice shot underneath on the dunk basket by Cottrell Green. A good feed inside. It was a good feed on the double team there for, for Indiana State. You know, we talked about David Moss in the open being their scorer. He is Indiana State's leading scorer, but he hasn't found the basket yet. He's scoreless. The average is 12.6, and he's their leading scorer. So that tells you about their troubles scoring. Also tells me they like to slow up their offense a little bit as well even if they aren't hitting their shots and that could be why we have such a low scoring game. Nice feed back three no rebound Darren Brooks over everybody to get it. Darren Brooks jumped out of the gym on that one his arms were way above the rim to grab that rebound. Suzuki's need a point to tie it up. Oh, bad play by Stetson but he's trapped. David Moss trapped Stetson trying to head to the basket. He tried to turn around and put it in Jermaine's hands. Unfortunately, Jermaine didn't see that coming, so it got knocked away and out of bounds off the sleepies. Stetson went a little too deep. That he did. It's 20 to 19. Under three minutes to go here in the first half. Hope to have Coach Weber for you right at halftime. Get his thoughts on the first half. He won't be happy, obviously, with the offense. Into the lane, nice move, good. No basket. Kent Williams, that's his second charge he's taken tonight. Just standing in the middle. Royce Waltman can't believe they called the charge. Let's see out for ourselves on the replay. Watch Kent's feet, watch him stand still and get run over. That is the textbook definition of a charge, and it's Deron Evans first. Southern needs a basket. Marcus Howard is all over Kent. Brad Korn did not think when he threw that ball in there. He threw it high, hoping Jermaine would be taller than everyone, but he was triple teamed. Moss came from behind on, on the backside help. There's a foul on number two, Darren Evans. That's two for him and two possessions down the court. Another turnover for the Sycamores. Well, look How at these chances are they going to give Southern to get back in the game. I don't know you know looking at this 20 to 19 score it's like something you'd see in 1973 not 2003. Maybe not in this arena in 1973 they were doing well at that <laughs> point but. Maybe go back even farther 63 low scoring game. Dearman up top. Kent. Corn. Stetson. Up and over and no good foul on Jermaine on Jermaine. I didn't see that but it was a picture perfect shot by Stetson Harrison except it didn't go in. He had a nice form and everything. Jermaine second came after the shot which is why we're going to the other end to shoot free throws. And Darren Evans will come down to the other end and shoot free throws. He is 12 out of 20 on the season. Warren comes in as Jermaine sits down with two fouls. You got to score him somehow. This must be one way for Indiana State to score, but even SIU can't hit their free throws, and that's going to that's gonna be costly if this game stays this low. 12 for 20 on the season is Evans short. Somebody was in the lane. Stetson it looks like so they're going to give it to him again. He can't, he's not allowed to come in. They're waiting. Uh, Ted Morris wants to come in if uh, <laughs> no, he can't Evans will in. hit the free throw. That first one just plain didn't count. Missed it again. OK. Can we score. I wonder I don't know exactly how long this drought's been but it's easily three and a half four minutes. DB, no, tip. And again, maybe not. And we press on. Fancy dribbling by Antoine. Moss with it. Marcus Howard. Antoine, top of the circle. Moss still scoreless. Evans. 
He walked. He's done that every time he touches the ball. And now they're starting to call him. He's not the only one on Indiana State who's who's taken extra steps and uh, has not been called for it. Bruce Weber wants to use his 30-second timeout. If he doesn't use it, he loses it. So Maybe Southern is going to talk about setting up a play. And that might result in a ball going through the orange hoop at the other end of the court because evidently they've forgotten how to do that. Most of the time when, when Bruce draws a play up, it works pretty well. Usually does, but uh, I, I wonder whether any play Bruce drew up, draws up today, or at least right now in the state of things, will work. It's not a matter of getting good shots. It's not a matter of getting open. It's a matter of putting the ball in the basket. But he's got the board out. He is drawing and telling his team to calm down, persevere. This happens to everyone. Leading score is Jermaine Dearman. He has eight. He's the leading scorer in the ball game. Stetson Harrison has five. Kent Williams has three. Warren with the free throw. Corn with the field goal. Indiana State is led by Lamar Grimes with five. Let's see what the dogs do on offense. Kent. He's open. Back to Stetson. Good. There we go. Got to break the string somehow. Stetson becomes or picks up his seven points. Indiana State can hold for the final shot. That's Moss with it. 16 on the Ooh. clock. Ooh. Here comes Moss working on DB. Blocked. Five seconds left. So he's got a shot. Kent. No. That would have been the perfect way to end the half. It doesn't go down, and that's pretty much the perfect way to end the and half. half anyway, right? As the dogs lead it by a score of 21 to 20 after the first 20 minutes of action here at the SIU Arena. Donnie Tillman is getting ready to talk with Saluki basketball coach Bruce Weber. Uh, not. And let's take it down to Donnie and Coach Weber. Donnie. It's Mike and Rick. Coach, first half has been kind of sluggish. You're only up by a point. No thoughts. Well, they're playing hard. They're you know, they lost four in a row. They're we knew they would defend well. They're defending better than they even did at their place. And we just haven't been able to get some things go, you know, some layups, some free throws go our way to get a little momentum. We've guarded well. I think they didn't score the last four or five minutes. So, you know, that was a great play at the end. Stetson made a great decision to give it to Kent. We just, you hope one of those will go down to get a momentum build. But we're up one. It's 20 more minutes. we got to grind it out and find a way to win. All right, coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Mike and Rick. Thank you, Donnie. It's the epitome of the first half. Southern made its first shot, but missed its last shot and missed a bunch in between, but still prevail here at halftime. The score, Southern 21, Indiana State 20. It's halftime. We'll have halftime information for you when we come back after these messages. The Salukis have scored is not a season low at half because at St. Louis U, they had, I think, 13 and a half or maybe 15 and a half. But it's just been sluggish. As, as, as Bruce said to Donnie, there's been nothing there to give him that spark to get this humongous crowd into the game. That's exactly right. You know, you have to feel better about this first half than he did at St. Louis because at St. Louis, the Billikens were scoring. Indiana State's not scoring. Now, they haven't scored any time this year. Indiana State hasn't. But really, SIU is playing tough defense. They are play hustling. They are playing hard. Problem is, they're not hitting two-foot jump shots. And if, I, I think a lot of people might trade that hard play for a two-foot jump shot. I'm not one of them because you got to figure they're going to fall. Yeah, and Indiana State all season long has struggled to score. I mean, they've only got 20, which is pretty normal. So Southern's done its job defensively, just haven't done the job offensively, but I think they'll get it together in the second half. Well, it's 21-20. The Salukis lead Indiana State at halftime. We'll be back with more information for you when we return to the SIU Arena in just a moment. Let's take a look now at the Missouri Valley Conference standings made possible by Edward Jones with more than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. And the Creighton Blue Jays sit alone on top of the Valley standings with a record of 7-1. and one. And not too far behind are Southern Illinois, Wichita State, and also Southwest Missouri. The Salukis are 6-1. and one. 
Wichita State and Southwestern five and one. And then it's a hodgepodge with Bradley, Evansville, Drake, Northern Iowa, Indiana State, and the winless Illinois State Redbirds bring up the rear at 0 and 7. But the battle for the top spot is interesting. Tonight, Wichita State is at Bradley, and Bradley is winning that game at halftime. And uh, Southwest Missouri is taking on Northern Iowa, and right now Southwest is beating Northern Iowa pretty handily. So the standings will change with every game that goes on, and Creighton sits at on top seven and one and 16 and two overall. Edward Jones investing in you and your dreams brings you the Missouri Valley Conference standings every game that we televise here on WSIU TV. Our score is 21 to 20. The Salukis leading the Indiana State Sycamores. We have some halftime stats and we have some more halftime information and we'll get to all that when we come back to the SIU arena after these messages. With Rick Reagan, and Donnie Tillman, Mike Trude back with you. It's halftime. We are moments before the tip off of the second half, and the Salukis lead the Sycamores of Indiana State by a score of 21 to 20. Let's go ahead and check the first half statistics, and the shooting percentages for both teams is a little bit sorry. Indiana State <laughs> flipping along in an 8 for 21, 38%. The Salukis a little bit worse, 8 out of 25 for a percentage of only 32%. We think the Salukis will pick up. I'm not so sure Indiana State's percentage will pick up. Three-pointers, the Salukis are two out of six. Indiana State, two out of three. Free throws, the dogs are under 500, three out of eight. The free throws are really inconsequential, except for the fact that the Salukis have missed theirs. <clears throat> and Indiana State has turned it over 10 times to the Salukis five times. So the Salukis have taken advantage of some of those turnovers, but not as many as you would like to think with only a one-point edge. I'll tell you what, the stat that tell, is telling to me is one you didn't see on your screen there, which is the rebounding numbers. Indiana State has out-rebounded SIU by eight. More importantly, neither team has been able to pull down any offensive rebounds. Three for the Sycamores, two for the Salukis. The SIU is not following up shots. They've missed 17 of them. You'd think that one or two more than, you know, three or four at least would, would show up in their hands. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. And, well, we have a birth. Congratulations. Oh, that's nice. Baby born January 24th, 03. Welcome to the world, Maddie. That's pretty neat. What is interesting, though, is Indiana State has 18 defensive rebounds, but the Salukis have only missed 17 shots. I don't know exactly <laughs> how that works, but, well, well. I guess the free throws count in there, too, so that all adds in there. But <laughs> needless to say, down eight on the boards is a telling stat that Southern is not being very aggressive on the offensive boards. Uh, but defensively, uh, Southern has done fine. I'll take eight out of 21 anytime from any team, even from any it is team Indiana on State. the defensive end of things. Sycamores average about 40% shooting. They're shooting 38%. So they're hitting their average, but that's not necessarily because they, you know, have been missing shots. SIU has played defense pretty well. Indiana State will start with the basketball, trailing by one, and the Dogs have their starting lineup back. It's Hairston Williams, Willis, Dearman, and Darren Brooks. Wilfred Antoine, number 13, in there for Indiana State. He's running the show. That's Marcus Howard. Down low to David Moss, and Moss throws it into the second row. Indiana State has turnover number 11, and Moss still without a point. That's kind of amazing. Sylvester Willis is about to inbound the ball. He's also without a point. That's not so amazing. That's kind of an average for him. He has been playing hard today. Two rebounds, though, as all really on his stat sheet. See how the dogs can do in the first four minutes of this half. See if they can seize control of the basketball game like they did against Wichita a couple weeks ago. And Jermaine starts with a good shot, just doesn't go down. The lid was on the other basket last half. Hopefully somebody didn't move it during halftime. And it's one and out again for the Salukis. As Rick mentioned, only two offensive rebounds in the first half. That's Marcus Howard. The crowd doing its clap chant as they do before the start of every half. Howard. Oh, Darren Brooks called for a foul. Nice job by Darren Brooks to play defense there. He just got a little too close to... Uh, that would be Marcus Howard. I didn't see who he fouled, but he got just a little too close and came down and hit him on the hand. It was a nice play, though. Howard doesn't miss many free throws. 16 out of 21, 76% on the season. Uh, there you go. There you go. Want to say that again, Mike? <laughs> It'll work a second time. This is just amazing. Unbelievable. Howard will try to tie it up. We're a minute into the second half, and he does.
capacity crowd on its feet trying to get the Salukis to do something. Karen Brooks just tried to get Jermaine on a back door, but Jermaine didn't go. And Hairston had no relief on the wing, so Southern was lucky that it was knocked out of bounds. Stetson working on Moss to Sylvester. Spin. No. Good he rebound. Not by a bucket. Hairston for three. No. Oh, heavens. You can't make him open. You can't make him covered. Some days are just like this, but this is ridiculous. And the longer Indiana State stays in it, the more of a chance they think they can win it. And boy, an upset over SIE would be big. David Moss gets his first two points of the game. Well, you knew that was going to happen eventually. He was going to score, but now Indiana State's on a little 3 0 run. And in this game, that's like saying they're on a 9 0 run. Darren Brooks, reverse, yes. Brooks' first points of the game. He hasn't found the basket either. Not it up at 23. Southern in the man defense. Antoine. Nothing there for him. To the wing and Evans. They can play off of him all day. Five on the shot clock. Antoine launches one. No. Tip in. That was a good play by Evans in the right place at the right time and just had that extra height advantage to get over SIU's defender and put it in. 25-23, Indiana State in the lead. Willis on the right wing. To Brooks, around the wing to Jermaine. Jermaine to the hoop for two. Nice feed from Darren Brooks. And what impressed me about Dearman's play is that the temptation is to go up for the dunk, and he probably would not have made it. He was a little too far away from the basket, had a guy in front of him, so instead he went right off the glass and put it in, took the easy two. 25 all. Antoine out at the wing, 15 on the shot clock, and they are milking the shot clock. Howard, no, too strong. Rebound, Stetson. See if Southern can do something in transition here. Got to get that lead back. Stetson has it blocked, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And that's when Stetson Harrison's at his best in transition. Watching him across here, that athleticism takes over. Except it also takes over for Deron Evans, who goes up and tries to block it and has no luck. That's Evans' third personal foul. He hasn't played all that much either. He only picked up seven minutes in that first half. Hairston with seven first half points. He's now got number eight. Corn is in for Willis. Looks like Brian Turner readying to check in for Hairston after this play shot. Southern back in the lead, 26 25. Cottrell Green back in for Indiana State. Stetson hits them both. And Turner comes in for Stetson. And Southern leads at 27-25. Slightly higher scoring second half so far than we had in the first. It was 21-20 at half. Antoine working on Brian Turner. Cottrell Green, that's a tough matchup for Brad Korn. Geeson. Up over Jermaine for two. He is a real factor in this game. If he stays out of foul trouble, SIU in the second half, as unlike what he did in the first, SIU will be in trouble because they can't find anybody tall enough to take him. Kent just throws up a prayer. Jermaine with the board. Can't get it to fall. Brooks. Turner. Oh, no. It's like the ball is coated with grease. He just lost it. Antoine comes down and gives Indiana State the lead. 
And Marcus Howard then knocks it out of bounds. Southern will keep the ball when we come back. But the Sycamores trailed by one at the half, have outscored the Salukis eight to six. So the Sycamores lead at 29-27. We'll be back to the arena after these messages. And welcome back to the arena. Indiana State leads the Salukis 29, 27, 15, 25 left to go in the ball game. WSIU is your home for Saluki basketball. Sure you, sure you, show your support by calling right now with a pledge. 1-800-745-9748. That's 1-800-745-9748. Salukis can't score. I'm tongue-tied. Donnie, help me. Donnie Tillman. All right, I'm in the crowd. I was wandering around, and I found one special lady. It's Brenda Chambers, and she is the mother of Saluki forward Jermaine Dearman. How's it been watching your son play tonight? Oh, it gives me adrenaline rush. I'm just on needles and pins here, but that's, that's normal. It's typical for me. <laughs> now he's pulled through. He's bought through eight points. He just missed the bucket earlier, but I'm sure he's going to try and redeem himself to make Mom proud. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know I'm up here rooting for him, as usual. <laughs> All right, well, it's good to see Mom here cheering for Jermaine Dearman. Hopefully he'll pick it up and help the Salukis bring a victory three to Carbondale. Back to you, Mike and Rick. Thank you, Donnie. Jermaine does have 10 points. He does have a bucket here in the second half. Brooks down low to Jermaine. The double team is on, and he shoots over it, and he scores. You know, one thing interesting about Donnie talking to Jermaine's mom there is that uh, Dearman himself, uh, you know, he was disappointed with his play at Indiana State because he's from Indiana. A lot of his family comes to see the, him play there, so he wanted to redeem himself tonight. We have a traveling call against Cottrell Green. Moved that back pivot foot a couple of times, and we're tied at 29. The Salukis have the basketball. This full crowd still shouting air ball whenever Cottrell gets the ball. He <laughs> made that air ball in the first half. I think early in the first half, he missed the run. Long memories for the Salukis. Williams got a step. Score! Over to Indiana State. Williams. Might need a little help off there ground there. Two guys went flying and uh, Kent climbed over them both. Dogs lead by two. Bruce is trying to get the crowd going. Antoine beats Turner bad but can't take it any further. Marcus Howard. David Moss thought about a three. Down low to Geeson. Backs Jermaine up. Left hander good. Brian that was Geeson a heck is of a, a nice play. And he's a solid player. He's an underrated solid player. Sixth year. He sat out all of last year with a knee injury. Not even wearing a brace now. Jermaine. Yes. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. I wonder if Geeson has that range that Jermaine's got because he didn't look, he didn't expect Jermaine to take a shot. And it paid off for SIU. 33-31. Jermaine's starting to feel it. 14 for him. Marcus Howard kicks it back to David Moss, wide open, no. Somebody's got to grab the ball. Brian Turner. Brian Turner does. Good second effort there by Jermaine to get the ball out to Brian Turner. Jermaine, and one, no shot, no shot. On the floor, on the floor they called it, and Bruce Weber can't believe it. But Jermaine Dearman, you're right, he's feeling it. Let's watch, see if the foul is committed when he's shooting. He's pushed off, and then they oh wouldn't give him the continuation. To give Either way, it doesn't matter. It's a foul. SIU has the ball, and that's important. Foul was on David Moss, his first. Second team foul. Boy, Jermaine Dearman really has stepped it up in the last three minutes or so of this game. Blake Schoen just in for Kent Williams. That's Jared Adler, number 44, just in your picture, replacing Geeson. Jermaine, fade away, yes. <laughs> He was going to get the point somehow. Keep feeding the big man. Dogs lead by four. Let's see if this crowd gets into it. Jeremy's got eight this half. Here comes the crowd. Marcus Howard. Seventeen on the shot clock. Now we're trying it. That unfortunately will silences it. Marcus Howard with a silencer. It was a nice shot by Howard that fade away, but they left him wide open. See if maybe they'll feed it back to Jermaine this time. Knocked out of there by 
Marcus Howard, boy, he's got quick hands. He's tired too. He just motioned to Coach Waltman that he needed a rest. He's going to get one here. Howard comes out. We're ahead of him, just ahead of a media timeout, so he's going to get a quick. A quick blow here. Duran Evans comes into the game. He's already got three fouls, and he might pick up his fourth. He hasn't played all that much time so far in this game. Stetson with it now. Dogs lead it by two. See if they can get the crowd back in it again. Corn. Oh, Brad. There's the fake I wanted to see, and he didn't get the three to go. But that's all right. Great look. Brad Corn creating some of his own plays on that one. He had 30, two looks. 35-33, dogs in the lead. David Moss, reverse. Nice. Nice play by the, uh, the freshman out of Thornwood. I saw him play in high school. He could do it then, and he's doing it against Dearman now. Turner. Feed it to him. Jermaine up. Draws the foul. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Fouls on Jared Adler. Here comes Dearman on the inside. And over goes, he just could not, he kept trying to push in on Jermaine instead of setting his feet and letting Jermaine run him over. Jermaine's gonna get two free throws. If he makes them both, the dogs will have their two point lead back. Fewer fouls this half than last, only four total for the two teams. Three for the Sycamores, one for the Salukis. We've almost doubled the points of the first half. <laughs> Jermaine hits. He's got 17. The only Saluki who can score consistently tonight, but sometimes, at least tonight, may only take the one. Williams and Brooks back in for Schoen and Turner. And quickly, Marcus Howard back in. He went out at the 12:36 uh, mark. He had all of uh, less than a minute rest. 47 seconds. Jermaine got them both. And we have come to our media timeout under 12, and the dogs have regained the lead. It's Southern 37, Indiana State 35. Back with more from the arena after this. Welcome back to a near capacity at the SIU Arena. Southern leads the Sycamores of Indiana State 37 to 35. You know, support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment. We thank Mark and his business for supporting Saluki basketball on WSIU. 37-35, the score at halftime was 21-20. We're not even 10 minutes halfway through the second half, and the offense has picked up a little bit, Rick. It sure has, and that's because of Jermaine Dearman. Dearman has, I believe, if I'm counting right, which is always a question, 10 points in this half. He's at, The rest of the Salukis have uh, four, six, six points in the half. Uh, it, it, Jermaine Dearman has really come alive. Now somebody else has to come alive to help him out. He's on the bench right now. We'll see what else you can do without him out there. He won't they, be there long, I No, he will it. not. Not not on the role he's on. But somebody's going to need to step up. Is it going to be Hairston? Is it going to be Warren in the game to replace Dearman? Who knows? But somebody's going to have to start hitting shots. It's Warren Korn and then the three starting guards of Williams, Brooks, and Hairston. Wilfred Antoine running the show for the Sycamores. He's Boy, fast. he's quick. Control Green passed up a shot that he might have taken in the first half. There's Evans with it. Percentages have kicked up a little bit. Saluki's 14 out of 37. Indiana State 15 out of 34. Let's nice see if steal. some defense can lead to some offense. Nice as steal by Corn there. Kent to DB. 4-3. No. SIU, as I said earlier, hit 15 of those against Northern Iowa. Tonight, I'm not sure they could hit 15 to 10 foot jumpers. If I can spit it out. Two point game. Howard. Up top to Evans. 15 on the shot clock. Brooks with a steal. 12 on the shot clock. Antoine's got to take it. Five on the shot clock. And he oh. hit it. That's two fadeaway jumpers they've hit this half. Uh, I believe Cattell Green, uh, no, Marcus Howard had the other one. At the shot clock buzzer. At the shot clock buzzer. Maybe that's just the key for Indiana State. They just wait and then take a fa fadeaway. Stetson. <laughs> loses it and then fouls. And an intentional foul. I don't know if that was going to be called an intentional until Indiana State's players all started calling for it, but it, it certainly wasn't intentional. You can't 
you can't fault the officials for the call. Here it is. He just grabbed him. Yep. I don't think there's any question about that. Two shots and a foul now for Antoine. And Indiana State can take the lead and they'll have the basketball back as well. In a low game scoring game like this, that was a big play. Antoine's a good free throw shooter, 77%. <laughs> That's working. It is working. <laughs> Moss was really good too and he missed his first one. Or rather Marcus Howard. So let's see if Antoine can give him a one point lead. Jermaine's coming back in, first opportunity. Made that one. So the Sycamores lead it. 38-37. Where is the spark going to come from? Jermaine Dearman, he's back on the court. Of course, maybe he, he, it's possible he used all of his spark in that little nice eight-point run he had. Here we go. Southern has beaten this team 21 in a row here at the arena. There have been some close ones, but lately the games have not been very close. Geeson to the left wing and Cottrell Green. Antoine. Throws it up. He's got nine. He averages five. Regular shots are not working for either of these teams, but for Indiana State, the crazy ones seem to be going in. Crowd getting into it. Turner for three. BT ties the game. That would qualify as a spark. It's That's getting the a crowd huge into three. it. St students are standing and applauding. I tell you, you mentioned the capacity crowd. I haven't seen one this big, I don't think, since Indiana last year. I agree. Not at 40. Howard. No, rebound to Josh Warren. Transition time. Brooks. Charge. Off the ball, too, on Dearman. Let's check it out again. It's the third foul on Jermaine Dearman. Bruce Weber is not happy. But we'll see if we can see it on this replay. Yep, there it was, backing right into him. Nailed Cottrell Green. So we're knotted at 40, under 10 minutes to go, approaching the nine minute mark, nine minutes exactly. Moss. Green, down low. Grimes, no, rebound Josh Warren. Second tall rebound right there by Josh Warren. Not jumping too much, just grabbing the ball because he's taller than everyone else. And knocked again by Moss. Boy, he's got long arms. And we thought DB had long arms. Darren was saved on that one because Moss didn't just grab it with his palm of his hand. David Moss is a heck of a good looking freshman. Howard has just hounded Kent Williams. Kent's only got five points. He hit a three and then he hit that running layup in the lane. Josh Warren, 19 footer, yeah. The lid is off the basket, and SIU has been able to hit their last couple of shots from long distance, a three and then a 19-footer from Josh there. Southern needs a stop. Lamar Grimes with it. Howard, right wing to Grimes. David Moss. Grimes. Shut off. 12 on the shot clock. Knocked out of bounds off of Kent. And we come to the under eight minute timeout, so Indiana State will have possession when we come back. 12 seconds on the shot clock. We've got 7.57 left to go in regulation, and the Salukis lead the Sycamores 42 40. We'll be back after this. We've got seven minutes and 57 seconds left to go. The Salukis lead the Sycamores 42 to 40. Southern has the best students, student crowd of any school in the Valley. And Donnie Tillman's up in the dog pound. Donnie. Thanks, Mike and Rick. I'm over here in the dog pound with all these Saluki fans because they get loud over here. It's not like all the other places where everyone sits down and they cheer every now and then. These guys stand for the entire game. Tim, you're a big fan. Why do you stand all game to cheer for the Saluki? Hey, to be honest, the reason we stand all game is number one, to support our Salukis. Number two, to hope we get a big enough lead to get Lakeith Taylor in the game. All right, you heard it from one of SIU's biggest fans. These guys get loud. Get loud. Come on. Let's get loud. Let's cheer on the Salukis. Let's go. Back to you, Mike and Rick. 
Nothing like the dog pound. Steal by Brian Turner. Great quick hands by BT. It's an excellent play, but I don't, still don't think we're going to have enough to get Lakeith Taylor back in the game today. <laughs> Not with this score. Dogs lead by two. This is a possession by possession game so far. Kent to the baseline. His pull up shot, no good. Josh Warren tips it in. Great play by Warren. We were talking about tall rebounds at the other end of the court. That was a power rebound on this end of the court. Right position, push the other guy out of the way and get the shot back up. Saluki's lead by four. See if they can get another stop. Build on the lead. David Moss with it. Foul's not an issue for either team. Foul on BT <laughs> as he nailed Grimes. So Grimes go to the free throw line. Southern's only committed four fouls. Indiana State only three. And real good look down here to Lamar Grimes. He got on the baseline and BT just hammered him. Yeah, he hit him a little too hard there. Well, more than a little too hard. He hit him very hard there. Just quite, couldn't quite get to the basketball, which he was trying to do. Lamar's a 70 percenter. And he missed. They've missed the first of every sequence here in the second half. Which is good news when SIU, if SIU puts them in the one and one. They're four out of eight for the game now. They were two out of three coming in. Grimes hits the second. He's got six points. Jared Adler and Wilfred Antoine back in. Geeson and Grimes are out. And the dogs lead by three. So they held them to one point. See if they can get a two or a three here. Just got to keep expanding that lead. Can't rest on anything, especially since this game is really seesawed all day. Turner with it. To Josh. Kent, see if he tries to go baseline. Free throw line. Turner. Dishes to Brooks. Darren passes up the shot. Nice feed to Josh Warren. Court vision. You can't emphasize that enough. Darren had, knew the shot clock was going down. He thought he might have to take the shot himself. Looked around, saw Warren wide open by the basket and put it in. Now we're up five. Dogs lead at 70, 46, 41. 70, 70 not We're not going to see 70 in this one. <laughs> Crowd getting involved now. Antoine. Oh, Jermaine almost had a steal. Cottrell Green, pull up. No. Nice board by Jared Adler. Wow. Kid just seemed to be in the right place at the right time. No good. Tip, no. Rebound control. That's long arms. If you want long arms, I think Brian did some inspector gadget work there, stretch him a little longer than normal. Coach Weber says run motion, run motion. Wouldn't be an SIU game without Coach Weber yelling motion. TB, jumper, no. Jermaine couldn't grab it, but Southern keeps it as it goes out of bounds off of Cottrell Green underneath. Hairston and Korn check back in on the lineup for the Salukis, who lead it 46-41 with 540 left to go in the ball game. And you have a sense that Southern's on the verge of getting this, of breaking away, of, of breaking getting, away. Get, get oh, out. to Korn for two and count it. That could be the break. Excellent play by Korn, taking the entire Indiana State defense by surprise. And what a feed by Brooks. Poor oh, what a feed. Poor Josh Warren didn't even get to sit down. He was halfway into his seat. Korn made the play, and he was standing back up. I think we'll see Korn here in just about a minute and a minute or two. Him and, and uh, Brian Turner maybe may come back in the game as well. One last rest for uh, Josh before we push him in. Foul was on David Moss, his second. Only the fourth team foul. This is the fastest game. I've seen this year. Normally games take two hours. This is a little over an hour and a half old. Time for a leisurely dinner afterwards. Horn hit it. He's got five. The dogs have their biggest lead. 49-41. And now SIU is playing like Southern Illinois has played this season. Royce Waltman wants a timeout, and the referee on the far side of the court saw it. And Royce is saying, hey, I'm looking right at you. Give me the timeout. And so he gets, we've got some updated scores from the Valley with 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Bradley leads Wichita State 48 to 41 with 11 and a half minutes to go in the game. Illinois State and Evansville, Evansville which knocked off Creighton the other night are tied 52 all. And with about 15 and a half minutes to go in the ball game, 
Southwest is playing at Northern Iowa and just destroying the Panthers 40 to 16. I think SMS can play some defense. SMS is an excellent young team. I've seen them once already this season. They are an excellent under overlooked team, underrated, overlooked, whatever you want to say. Northern Iowa play, played their hearts out against Southern Illinois the other night. SIU, or, yeah, SIU didn't give them, or certainly gave them a lot of favors by, by missing some shots that they should have made and et cetera, but they played their hearts out. When that game didn't go their way, I think it took a lot out of the Panthers. I think that's part of what we're seeing tonight. The Salukis will play Southwest Missouri State a little bit later uh, on this year. In fact, they'll be live from the Hammond Center in Springfield, Missouri at 7 o'clock p.m. on February 8th. And that'll be the first test of the year for the Dogs in Springfield. And then February 15th, one week later, the Dogs travel up to Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, <laughs> to take on the Bradley Braves without Danny Granger. But the Braves are undefeated since Danny Granger left the team and since he transferred today to New Mexico. Is that official today? It is official today. He transferred to New Mexico. Well, then I Still a little problem of whether Bradley will give him a release, which means he will get to play the year and he won't have to pay his own way. But we'll see what happens. Right, Bradley accusing uh, New Mexico and its coaches of a little bit of uh, tampering, maybe is the right word. Uh, a little bit of undue influence is what I'm looking for. It's an accusation. We'll find out if it comes through. In, in the near future with new coach uh, Jim Les up there at Bradley who's doing a good job pulling his team together after the NBC second leading score he's still up there second leading score left that, the team that won't last long 49-41 no. the score the clock approaching the 520 mark in the second half and they throw it away in the backcourt and there's the over and back call they turn it over again and the Salukis will take over with the eight-point lead. And you can see it slipping away from the Sycamores. In a low-scoring game like this against a team like Indiana State that's not shooting very well, that eight points is just huge. And it's a psychological eight points, not just uh, on the scoreboard. And they've only committed four fouls, so they can't start putting the dogs to the line until they commit four more fouls. Kent. For three. Yeah! You're going to find out that that spark was the Brian Turner three-pointer. The only shot he's had all game, or at least the only basket he's had all game, that will be the key. It tied the game at 40. Geeson, Antoine, ooh, he thought about a three. Kick it to the corner. Geeson will shoot that one. No way. Fouled from behind. Cottrell Green on corn, and the Dogs will have possession of the basketball. Four and a half minutes to go in this one. Four on Cottrell Green, him I have to sit. Cottrell Green, as Rick just mentioned, has four. Geeson sits down as Evans comes back into the game. Darren Evans. They might as well let Cottrell Green play with only four and a half minutes to go. There's not a, a little rest. No might time like good, the present. Down nine or er, 11. 11. I can't do even count anymore. Down Dogs 11. Lead role. by 11. Stetson. To Korn. Ooh, the high-low was almost there. Brooks looking. They're so concentrating now on Jermaine that there's a lot more open territory. Stetson on the baseline. Ten on the shot clock. Down to seven. Kent. Left-handed. No. Oh. Rebound to Brooks. Nobody's fouled. And D.B. will go to the line. And Kent can't believe he wasn't fouled. We'll watch it again. We'll see if Ken is fouled. He's over there in your corner there. This is a slow to developing play. Kent's going to come around the side. Here he comes He's in the free drive. Line. He's going to be hit there by uh, Geeson. Hit there. Go Just off, close it up. Go. Brooks hammered right there. You know who I do feel bad for is Dur Duran Evans, who was kind of stuck on the ground there. And that's kind of an unnerving position, knowing somebody could come down on him. Brooks hits the free throw. I don't feel too bad, however. 53-41, Indiana State has only scored 21 points this half, 20 in the first half. So great defense by the Dogs. Brooks makes them both. And we're at our final timeout officially of the ball game. The Salukis have extended the lead to 13. It's 54-41. We'll be back with the final 358 when we come back. 
And the Slukies have extended that lead. It's 54 41 over Indiana State. You know, home is where the heart is. Your home for Saluki basketball is WSIU Public Television. Help keep your home in shape with a generous pledge, and we'll keep your heart pumping with exciting Saluki basketball. We promise. Call now 1 800 745 9748. That's 1 800 745 9748. The dogs are on their way to 22 in a row over Indiana State and 21 in a row here at the arena. You mentioned exciting Saluki basketball. That was one of those exciting plays that we just saw. Josh Warren coming up, putting up, getting the put back in. Even in the low scoring first half, it had its excitement. It had its moments, that's for certain. Sycamore basketball. It'll be Darren Evans taking it out. And with the victory today, barring a total collapse, the and dogs ought to have a great crowd Wednesday night when the Bradley Braves come to the arena. Bradley winning their game over Evansville as we speak. Wichita. Wichita. Evansville is tied within Illinois State. Marcus Howard, who's done a great job on Kent Williams. Antoine to Howard. They need some threes. Two's isn't going to do it. David Moss, kick it out to Evans for three. No. Rebound controlled by Cottrell Green. Saluki's 10 out of 15 from the line, 66%. Indiana State 5 out of 9 at 55%. So free throws really inconsequential in this one. While SIU does need to keep its uh, defensive pressure up, let Indiana State run any clock it wants. There's the steal. Now Southern will milk the shot clock. It's time to spread it out. Royce Waltman looking pensive on the sideline. Doesn't know exactly what to tell his team. It's hard. It's hard to play as good a defense as they play and just not be able to score. And they just can't score. Stetson with it. Nine on the shot clock. Give it to Jermaine. There it is. Scores. Athletic play by Dearman right there. He's got 20 now. Really nice feed down low, too. Stetson. On defense there, working on Antoine, and now Jermaine with Cottrell Green. And see, the sad thing about the Sycamores is they still, even though they have to score, they still have to milk the shot clock down. Evans hits the shot. Excuse me, Cottrell Green. Before that basket. Down to Jermaine. He just wants to score. Oh. He's got 22. You know, it was 40. And, and Bruce looked right at Stetson and said, no more of those long passes. It was 40 to 37 at one point. It's now 58 to 43, actually the other way around. So it's been a uh, 21 to 3 point run for SIU. That's impressive. 21 to 3 run. You're right. This game was tied at 40 at one point. Shot no good. Tip by Evans, no. Tipped again, no. Rebound, no. And they didn't call a foul there. Referees want to get out of here, too, because it sure looked like Evans got hammered underneath. It did, but I think they've decided now. now and they then they call, call that. that. How about that? Evans gets hammered underneath on a follow. And, and then they call a touch foul 50 feet from the basket on Marcus Howard. Indiana State coach Royce Waltman just does. He just looks awful right now. He doesn't know what to do. He's got his head down. And as you mentioned, it's tough. I mean, everything is going right for the other team now and going wrong for your squad. And turnovers playing a point in this one, 16 to 7. The turnover ratio, Indiana State to Southern. And Royce Waltman just isn't sure what to do. There's no, no offensive punch on this team. Kent Williams hits. So Kent now one for three from the free throw line. Only six points tonight, a very low scoring game for him. Also a low game for Darren Brooks. He's got four, although he did have about 50. He averaged about 15 in Missouri Valley Conference play. Minute 21 left. The crowd filing out of the arena. Kent hits the second one as well. 23 to three run. Dogs lead by 17. Sure didn't look that way at half. No, it but you not. knew the shots had to start falling. Antoine for three. Yeah. Wilford hits it. He's been their best player tonight. He's got 12. He's handled. All the Saluki pressure. 
<laughs> nice throw, Jermaine. <laughs> what the heck was that? Bruce called it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> New rule, if you pass it to the ref, you get a timeout. I hope you guys got that in the truck, because I think Bruce will want to use that later on for a highlight tape of Jermaine. If Bruce doesn't, I will. <laughs> Tossing the ball to the official who's still laughing over on the right baseline oh to my. get the 30-second timeout. That was pretty good. David Carney checking into the game for the Salukis as they lead it 60 to 46. That was solid with a, work. With a minute four left to go in the ball game. I think Jermaine wants to get out of here too. <laughs> what a great crowd here. We'd love to thank all of you for coming. We know the game's on TV and you still came out to watch it. And that makes doing home games a lot more pleasure, pleasurable as well. We want to thank all it's a you. Good at, basketball team. We want to thank all you at home for sitting around and watching as well. It certainly is a good basketball team, and this place was just about full tonight. And glad we could bring this to you at home as well. They want it. Oh, I thought Carney is. Yeah, Carney is. Oh, Dave Carney just got hammered. David Dave, Carney from Tell City, Indiana, the crowd favorite. There isn't a player more beloved. Jared Adler just nailed him. They want him to shoot. <laughs> he always just passes it. He always passes it. Ten on the shot clock to Kent. I see Carney later on in the week. I'll be sure to tell oh, him. Oh, nice move, Kent. Time. He got stripped though on a play. Here comes Antoine, and Carney's the only one back. Oh, Ooh. and he got dunked on by Patrell Green. Green. Yeah. Twenty-seven I seconds left. The dogs don't need to score. It's a twelve-point lead. I won't mention that play to Carney. He's a good sport about it. Really nice guy. 21 in a row at home, 22 in a row at home over the Sycamores. The Salukis are now tied with the Creighton Blue Jays for first place in the Missouri Valley Conference with a record of 7 and 1. And a great second half by the Dogs. Pull this one out. With the final score, the Salukis 60. Indiana State 48, Jermaine Dearman comes up with 14 second half points. And the spark plug, as you said, I think, Rick, was the three pointer by Brian Turner, which nodded the score at 40 when Southern was trailing 40 to 37, which got the crowd back into a little bit. And then Brian also came up with a huge steal on the defensive end to trigger another another score and Southern went on from there to, to pound the Sycamores and Indiana State scored 20 points in the first half. 28 in the second half and it's a team that just plain struggles on the offensive end they certainly do and as we said that was a 37 to uh or to, sorry a yeah 30 30 33 to to eight run or some exorbitant amount like that all right donnie tillman's got jermaine dearman who came up huge in the second half donnie he had 18 second half points jermaine i talked to your mom earlier during the game and she talked about she hoped you had a good game against indiana state we talked earlier this week and you said you wanted to redeem yourself because of the bad time you had at indiana state last the last time you guys played i think you did that tonight yeah i think i don't know uh not as much as i wanted to but we got the win uh, i think i did uh did what we had to do to win uh it was kind of it was kind of hanging around a little bit too much it was a little too close but uh, we, we stuck with it. We played good defense, and uh, it, it got us to win in the second half. So I'm happy about it. I got my revenge. Now, you had a tough – I mean, you really carried the team during a tough time when they couldn't really get points on the board. You really carried the team. And that was important because that got other players involved in it. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's, it makes me feel good. Uh, I got to expect the double team. They've been double teaming me all year. So I've just been uh, waiting for my teammates just to step up and make those uh, open shots. And uh, they've been doing that lately. So I don't, I don't know how long they're going to be able to double team in the rest of the year. They can't be giving up easy points like that. Josh has been stepping up his game Brad's been stepping up his game and they've been complimenting the big man so I'm happy how, how the uh, team is playing right now how big is it to play a sluggish game like you guys did in the first half and then just turn it on in the second half and be able to win with a nice cushion yeah I mean they was playing a real, uh, real tough uh, defense in the first half I think Indiana State was real geeked up to play us uh, they were a little frustrated they had lost like four games in a row so we it was just a battle a seesaw battle in the first half but you know we stuck with it we dug down we grinded it out uh, it was a slow game but we got we got a couple of sparks in the second half Stetson, uh, stepped up made some big plays hit a three uh, Brad got an uh, N1, Josh got a layup, and that kind of got uh, the ball rolling. Then, you know, I came in and did a little something at the end to compliment everybody else. So we just all played together as a team tonight, and it was fun. So. All right, well, you continue to haunt Indiana State with shots and playing good games. Good luck to you. Thanks, thanks. Have a good game. All right, that was Jermaine Dearman talking about the game. Back to Rick and Mike with the call. Thank you, Donnie. 60-48, to 48, the Salukis with a big second half come out with a victory. 
Rick and I will wrap things up from the arena when we come back right after these messages. And welcome back to the SIU Arena. The Dogs came back in the second half to beat the Indiana State Sycamores. The final was 60 to 48 to go to seven and one and 12 and four on the year. I want to remind you that support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by WSIU Public TV, the city of Carbondale, Vogler Ford, Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment, Biasi Keyboard and Sound, Venegoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Venegoni Distributing. 710 Bookstar and our good friends at Ike Auto Park. Without those folks, this doesn't happen. And the dogs win it by 12. They've got some numbers, not totally official, but give us an idea what the fans saw tonight. Well, it was a, they saw they saw a bad first half and a much better played second half is what they saw. 23 points for Jermaine Deerman. He hit his number according to these tallies. 12 for Stetson Harrison. Those two led all scores in the game. Six for Kent Williams, five each for Brad Corn and Josh Warren. Uh, four for Aaron Brooks and three points, big three points for Brian Turner. For Indiana State, 12 for Wilfred Antoine. He was certainly their best player. Known as a point guard, he certainly did the scoring for them. Eight for Terrell Green and Brian Geeson each. Six each for Marcus Howard and Lamar Grimes. Four for David Moss in a bucket for Darren Evans and, a, and two free throws for Ted Morris. The dogs now seven and one await the Bradley Braves who had a lead over Wichita State. And Bradley is a different ball club now without Danny Granger in the lineup. They're depending on their big three guards of, of Gilbert and Marcello Robinson and one of the other guys to carry this team because they don't have any big guys doing much. They don't have big guys doing much, but I'll tell you one thing you don't want to do when you come into SIU is to say, oh, we're going to win on our guard play because at the beginning of the year, I don't think there was a single coach in the Valley, including Dana Altman at Creighton, who said, uh, who, who would not agree when you say that Southern has the best guard defense guard play in the conference. So it could become a battle of SIU's guards versus their guards. And I, you know, having not seen Bradley's guards, I can't say anything, but especially at home, I'd give SIU an edge on that one. Saluki's win it tonight. The final score was 60 to 48. They are seven and one in the conference, 12 and four overall. Indiana State falls to five and 13 and one and six in the Missouri Valley Conference. For Donnie Tillman and Rick Gregg, this is Mike Trude. We want to thank the crew for their great work today. Thank the fans for coming. Thank you for watching the final score from the SIU Arena. Southern Illinois University 60, Indiana State 48. So long from the arena. Year, the SMS Bears stopped the Saluki's winning streak cold and dealt the dogs the first of two road losses late in the season. Fast forward one year and the stage is set once again for these closely matched teams to face off. Watch live Saluki basketball as the Salukis go to battle with the Bears of Southwest Missouri State. Tune in for all the game action, special halftime reports, sideline updates, and much more. We make the trip so you don't have to. Live Saluki basketball, February 8th at 7, only on WSIU, your TV home for Saluki basketball.